SC3L141 describe structures in plants and their roles in food production, support, water and nutrient transport, and reproduction. Target 1. Observe roots, stems, leaves, needles, flowers, fruits, seeds, spores, and cones in plants. Target 1. Observe roots, stems, leaves, needles, flowers, fruits, seeds, spores, and cones in plants. In this unit, we're going to observe plants. We will observe the parts of plants. The parts of plants that we should be familiar with are roots, stems, leaves, needles, flowers, fruits, seeds, spores, and cones. Not all plants have all these parts. Many plants have roots. Some plants, such as this Spanish moss, do not. Some plants have stems, and some, like this kind of moss, do not. Some plants have leaves, and some plants have needles. Some plants have flowers. Many plants do not. Some plants use flowers to reproduce, and some plants, like this fern, use spores. Some plants, like this cypress tree, have cones. Each of these plant parts have functions, or jobs, that help the plant to survive and reproduce. The plants that we will be looking at in this unit are all found in Florida. We will look at Spanish moss, resurrection ferns, pine trees, cypress trees, and orange trees. You might even see some of these plants around your school or near where you live. Let's begin by talking about what a plant is. A plant is anything that uses light from the sun plus air and water to make its own food. All things need energy to survive. You and I need energy. We get our energy from the food we eat. We eat fruits, vegetables, meats, grains, dairy, things like milk, cheese, and yogurt. But plants make their own food. They don't have to eat. Plants use light from the sun to turn water and air into food that the plants can use to build new plant parts. Some of the food the plant makes goes for the plant to use later. Animals can use some of the parts of plants to eat for energy. Do you like carrots? Carrots are roots. Have you tried celery? Celery are stems. Lettuce is a leaf. And we all love apples, of course. Apples are a fruit. Beans and peas are seeds. All of these foods are example of parts of plants that we can eat. What about needles? Needles are too tough to eat. Spores are too small to eat. Cones are usually too hard to eat, but if you know how to get into them, the pine nuts inside the cones are delicious. Animals, including birds, insect, reptiles, amphibians, and fish, all eat plants too. Without plants, what would we do for food? Target 2. Recognize that plants produce their own food. Target 2. Recognize that plants produce their own food. Plants need three things in order to survive. Sunlight, water, and air. I have four pots of wheatgrass plants that I have planted. Every day I have been watering the plants. I use a special light to make sure they get enough light to grow here in my studio. And of course, there's plenty of air in here. To show that plants need sunlight, water, and air to survive, I'm going to remove each one of those things from one plant at a time. Plant number one will continue to get the same amount of sunlight, water, and air. I'm not going to change anything with plant one. Plant two will stay right here. It's not going to get any light. Plant three will stay out on the same counter. It's going to get the same amount of sunlight and air as plant one, 
but it won't get any more water. Plant 4 will be tricky. I have to remove the air that plant 4 gets. So now we can test what happens to plants when they don't get sunlight, water, and air. Well, what did we learn? First, plant number one did fine. It got enough sunlight, water, and air to survive. Plant two didn't get any sunlight. It died. Plant three didn't get any water. It died. Plant four didn't get any air, and it died. Plants need three things in order to survive, sunlight, water, and air. Take any one of those three things away, and the plant will die. Plants use sunlight, water, and air to make the food they need to supply the energy they need to survive. By taking away any one of those three things, the plant can't make food. There will be no more energy for the plant to survive. Target 3. Recognize that roots provide support and water and nutrient transport for a plant. Target 3. Recognize that roots provide support and water and nutrient transport for a plant. Roots are the part of a plant that grows into the soil. Roots help the plant get the water it needs to survive. Roots help the plant get the nutrients they need to help make the food they need to survive. Roots also provide support to help the plant stand up. Plants do need nutrients to help them make the food they need in order to survive. Be careful though when you're thinking about nutrients for plants. It's easy to get confused. This is a bottle of nutrients that I can add to the soil that a plant is growing in. Many times these bottles are labeled as plant food, or we talk about them as being plant food. Plants don't eat. They don't need food. Plants make their own food from sunlight, water, and air. So what are nutrients? Nutrients are vitamins and minerals, just like the ones we talk about in the food we eat. Orange juice is a good source of vitamin C. I can also get vitamin C from a pill. But vitamin C isn't a food. Nutrients are vitamins and minerals that help living things survive, but they are not food. Let's go here to the Fakahatchee Swamp. A swamp is a wetland that is flooded with water all or part of the year, and the most noticeable kinds of plants in a swamp are trees. This is a cypress tree. The cypress tree has roots that spread out at the bottom. Because the swamp has plenty of water in it, the roots have an easy job of helping the tree get water. However, because there is so much water on the ground, it becomes hard for plants to stand up straight in the muddy soil of a swamp. So the cypress tree's roots spread out at the bottom. These spreading roots, or buttresses, help the plant to stand up when the ground gets wet and too soft. Otherwise, the tree might tip over. Hey guys, I'm out in Big Cypress National Preserve today, and I'm standing in the middle of a cypress swamp. But what I want to talk about is how this kind of plant right here, this is a bromeliad, or an air plant, gets what it needs. Now, this cypress tree right here clearly gets its water from the root system down in the ground. Even here, we see some smaller air plants on the side of this tree. And you'll see these around your schools and around your homes. I will tell you that these plants can absorb the water they need directly from the air. You'll see that with Spanish mosses, lichens, these lichens that are growing on the side of the plant down here. There's many examples. Here's a flower for this bromeliad right here. Ooh. Hear that bullfrog? Big old bullf bullfrog in the background there. So cool. I just wanted to share that with you, how these air plants, these bromeliads, get the water they need directly from the atmosphere and not through a root system like most other plants. Spanish moss is a very common plant that grows on other trees for support, but gets its water directly from the air. Here is some Spanish moss on a tree at an elementary school. 
here's a cypress tree growing right in front of another elementary school. Roots help a plant get the water it needs. Roots also help plants get the nutrients they use from the soil. Without roots, plants wouldn't be able to stand out. Check out this lichen growing on a tree. This lichen has no roots, so it just grows on the tree like a blanket. The next time you're munching on a carrot, thank a root. Remember, carrots are roots. Target four, recognize that stems provide support and water and nutrient transport. Target four, recognize that stems provide support and water and nutrient transport. The stem of a plant connects the whole plant together. The stem is connected to the roots at the bottom of the plant and grows up out of the ground. When seeds begin to grow, the roots grow down in response to the pull of gravity and the stem grows up in response to the light of the sun. As stems split, we usually call them branches. Branches are still stems and they still do the same job. The branches of this cypress tree split off and hold up the tree's needles and cones. So here we are at another cypress tree, and this one has a lot of these cypress cones on them. You can see going all the way up the tree, see all those balls that are hanging from the, the ends of the branches? Those are all cypress cones, and it's those cones, although they don't look like cone-shaped, it's these cones that make this a coniferous tree, and because pine, or excuse me, because cypress also sheds its needles in the, in the fall, that makes it a deciduous tree. Just an interesting trait of cypress trees. The branches continue to move water and nutrients up the plant to where they are needed. This is a slash pine seedling. This is a pine tree that has just started to grow. This seedling has almost no stem at all. We can see the needles spreading out from a very low stem. As the pine tree begins to grow up, the stem will begin to split. Here is a slash pine sapling, or young plant, that has just begun to split. You might also notice the bark on this pine tree. It is very thick and rough. Bark on a tree has the same function or job as our skin. It keeps all the water in and all the bad stuff out. It helps to protect the tree. This adult slash pine tree has grown very tall. The trunk of this tree has lifted its branches high away from the ground. There's a good reason for this. Those high branches are far away from any fires that might be started by lightning. The bark of this tree also helps to protect the tree from fire. It can burn and flake off with new bark underneath. This helps protect the tree from fire. Not all plants have stems. Here is some lichen. It gets the water it needs from the air around it, and it just grows on this tree like a blanket. It doesn't use the support of a stem to stand up or move water. This Spanish moss also doesn't have a stem. It just hangs from the branches of another tree. It gets the water from the air around it and uses the tree itself to hang from. Here is a slash pine tree growing at an elementary school. You might see these growing near your home. Take a look around your school and see if you can recognize plants that have stems and those that do not. 